Now, some of Bill Mollison's principles were, let's see, let's go up here. Bill's principles were like, work with nature, not against it. <clears throat> uh, the problem is the solution. Do you remember any other ones? No. Yeah, I, I look at them and I remember when I see them, but, you know. Uh, and then some of David's, we'll get David's here and we'll go through those. Really, permaculture is a holistic design science, an integrated design science that seeks how do, it, it seeks the answer to how do we live on earth sustainably. <laughs> I've, I've got them if you want them. Okay. Um, observe and interact. Okay. Catch and store energy. Hey, alright. Catch and store energy. Obtain a yield. Hold on. Apply self-regulation and accept feedback. That's one. Yeah, that's one. That's number four. Okay. All right. Um, use and value mm -hmm. renewable resources and services. Use and value renewable mm -hmm. resources and services. Okay. Produce no waste. Okay. Design from pattern to detail. Okay. Integrate rather than separate. Mm. Okay. Use small and slow solutions. That's a hard one for us Americans. Mm -hmm. Even, I mean, all of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Use and value diversity. These 12 principles, you can see that they're, they keep with some of Bill Mollison's uh, statements saying that permaculture is about positivity and cooperation. And you can tell that all, every one of these is, <coughs> is positive, you know. Cr I mean, creatively use and respond to change. That's not the easiest thing to do, you know. So it's, it's, real, it's real positive. Uh, <clears throat> so let's start at the top. We'll get. Well, I guess we have to step back a little bit. <clears throat> so those are the ethics. Now, um, there's a sort certain format, obviously, to design science. Um, there's uh, site analysis. So now we're looking at. Now we're looking at it as a design in a design framework. So there's site analysis, there's zoning, zones, let's talk about zones real quick. 
Um, and there's sectors. And there's other things too, but these are the things I'm just going to go over real quick and then we'll go back to this. So zones, we'll start out with zones. Zones 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They make it really easy. Um, actually, there's zone 0, too. Some people would say there's zone 0, 0. So people go really into this zone stuff. But it's just trying to give a description of efficiency. Uh, so usually this is, this is um, taught in this manner, even though no piece of property is circular. So this is where the house is. This little dot in the middle is the house. That's zone zero. You go out, that's zone one. You go out further away from the house, that's zone two. You go further away from the house, that's zone three. Further away from the house, or, or village, or city. That's zone four. Go further out, that's zone 5. Zone 5 is nature. That's the place that, uh, whether we live in a urban setting and we have Central Park to go to with a creek running through it or whatever, or we live out here and we can walk down to the creek and enjoy zone 5. Watching the flow of the water, how does water flow? Um, watching the birds just feeling that sense of inspiration from nature and then finding out okay well if that's the way nature does it then I can mimic that in my design and the reason why design is so important is because then you don't make a lot of the costly mistakes in later down the road like losing your soil like we went to a farm the other day and the guy lost his soil He's starting a CSA, we got 12 inches of rain, and he lost his soil because there was a lack of design. Simple as that. And not to say that he's not doing a good job or anything like that, but there are, there are certain protocol. Design helps us to prevent the catastrophes that could possibly happen, whether it's on our farm, in our garden, in a city, in an urban, you know, in a suburb, whatever. Um, so, zone zero is the house. It's the most active place. Let's just say for in now that this is zone zero. Um, zone zero is the place where you're the most active, it's the place where you sleep, it's the place where you cook your breakfast, it's the place where you cook your lunch, it's the place where uh, all these things. This is the place of the most activity, obviously. This is the place where you're cooking, going to pee, all these things. Right outside the door here is an herb garden. It's not very far from the kitchen. Now this is the type of thinking that is so important in the new language that we're trying to teach called permaculture is that why do we have our vegetable gardens in the back 40 where they're hard to get to to water where they're far away you know and typically they get abandoned so we put things that are of use daily in zone one, which are herbs. You know, you're always cooking with herbs. You always need some herbs. Maybe some fresh lettuce would be nice, you know, because you can co constantly pick it. Now, while you're on your way picking the herbs, you can, well, actually, while you're on your way, there's other things you can be doing, too. 